my main point, my main focus is going to be on 33. And it reads, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you O ye of little faith. Verse 31. Therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or where with all shall we be clothed. Verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for ye, for your heavenly Father knows what ye have need of all these things. Here comes verse 33. Yes. But seek ye first yes. the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness yes. and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore not, take therefore no thought for tomorrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day of it is sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, God, I bless you right now that this revelation, this word has gone forth un unchecked by any outside force moving in the authority of the heavens. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, manifestation shall come to pass. God, I have literally moved out of the way and you have stepped forward. I have decreased and you have increased. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 He's faithful and just to forgive us 
give you your sins. So when I gave my life to Christ again, y'all know us. We started talking about the tunnel vision maybe a month ago. My mind, my eyes was in a tunnel, and my goal was to seek after God. And every requirement that I needed, Lord, show me, help me. One instance that when I did when I, when I made that decision, I think it was a revival at St. Paul. And that was uh a young man there was selling watches. And I'm not, I'm not, I, I wasn't where I'm at now and my finances wasn't where it needed to be. Glory to God. Yeah. But that was a watch. He was something I said, you know, I, I wouldn't mind having a watch like that. And God used a friend of mine, Reverend Palmer, he was sitting, I think, in the pulpit. And we went up to, to the altar for the altar call for prayer. He said, he pulled me to the side. He took his watch off of his hand, Jesus. off his arm, and gave it to me. Jesus. That was God's way. Of telling me, come sir. I heard you. There's no way he could have heard me. He went to the altar, he took his watch off of his arm and gave it to me. When that happened, I was on the hook. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I'm hearing you. And it reminds me of when Jesus told, took the disciples out and they was tall and night after night after night after night after night after night after night ain't no fish. But I'm telling you as a leader, as an overseer or whatever you, however you would see me as your pastor, your brother, and I remember, and, 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 thank you for the spirit. Sometimes people will say, Brother Grant, Brother Joe, it's okay. It don't matter. Because see, that's a distraction to keep you from getting to where God needs you to be. Yeah, you're supposed to give on, but it's okay. But Jesus told them, I need you to toss out into the deep. <laughs> and I'm, I'm speaking to Supernatural Praise Ministries right now. The church family, the ministry as a whole, the one that is viewing, it's time to toss out into the deep. Yes, we know Matthew 6 and 33 is a, a familiar passage. But get off the surface. It's time to get off the surface. It's time to get what God has for you. Glory to God. We got to get off the radar. Stop worrying about what you should eat and what you should drink and what, what you want to wear. He said, God said, Jesus said, He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. So I want to take you back to where I came back to Christ. St. Paul Baptist Church. 
She's in the midst of transitioning to another pastor. And I wanted to do everything, but not that I wanted because it was a desire in my heart. I gotta tell you all this before I get back into the word so you'll understand where I'm going. It was 3 a.m. prayer, no, 5 a.m. prayer. And my father in law was still living. And I, I don't know whether he asked her, my mother in law, or my mother in law asked her, but that, 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 that boy getting up this time in the morning to go to 3 to 5 a.m. prayer. Because I was on a mission. I was on a mission. I was on an assignment. It was a desire in my heart to go after God. Because I wanted the stuff. It started off by I wanted, I wanted the blessings. I wanted the financial stability. I wanted the peace. I wanted the love. I wanted the comfort. Because when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of living the way the way you're living and, and know that God has something better for you. Y'all okay, you. You just, just bear with me. So I began to go to 3 m prayer. I mean 5 a.m. prayer. Matter of fact, was, I know I keep saying 3 a.m. Because we was, I was, we was learning how to operate in the fourth watch. 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. is when God did supernatural things in biblical history. Amen. So I found myself getting up at 3 a.m. and going to 5 a.m. prayer. Because I was hungry. I was hungry. And even at that time, The requirement was, I didn't know too much about it then, paying your tithes. Going to Sunday school, going to Bible study, going to regular services. I just wanted to be in church. And I remember Evangelist Andrea Williams said she, every time she passed the church, she wanted to see whether we was doing something that particular night. When you get hungry for God, this is how the, the seeking begins. I didn't have a job at that time, so I couldn't pay tithes. But I didn't thought I could pay tithes. But I learned in the midst of that, give 10% of your time. That's right. That's a way of seeking God too. Glory to God. And then nothing was going to stop me. Nothing was going to stop me. And God brought it back to my remembrance. He didn't say, seek your wife. All right. He didn't say, seek your husband. He didn't say, seek your children. He didn't say, seek your job. All right. He said, seek ye him. I began to read my Bible. And I couldn't stop, I couldn't put it down. I could not put it down. And when he says go deeper, stop seeking. If you put someone in your way, but stop seeking, seeking that husband or that wife to do what he's calling you to do. Because see, God allow me to see, and that's why I can respond to you. God is grieving. Why is God grieving? Because we are not seeking him like we should. We are on the surface. But don't you want more? Don't you want the blessed plan? Don't you want more of God? I would fast. I 
I've been fasting over 18 years. I remember one year I fasted with no meat, no sweets, no sauce. And I'm not talking about just seafood. I fasted because I wanted to be in the presence of God.
There's a song that says I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I searched all over. But you got to understand he's right here. He's right before your eyes. How that will see. And it brings me back to greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So he's literally in me. Y'all remember the sermon? Establish the kingdom. Establish the kingdom. Establish the kingdom. Establish the kingdom. He's in you. Glory to God. I seek you first. The kingdom of God. The model prayer says, that kingdom come. Pull that kingdom down. That kingdom come. That kingdom come. That kingdom come. That will, that will, that will be done. Now I know why God is going to give me this. God wants to transform your heart. He wants to transform the heart of man. That takes me to Romans 12 and 2. He said, this is what Paul said, and be not transformed. No, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will. See, when you seek after him, you're going to find his will. When you seek after him, you will find his will. I can give you, I can tell you all day long, but it's in you. You got to find the will that's already been planted in you. Lord, with my whole heart. God said, I want to transform your heart. I want to do heart surgery on you. So you will know how to come after me. He said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the, stone, the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36. And 26. See, you'll never find the will of God if you're not. You, you got to say, God, create in me a clean heart. I need a, I need a new heart, God. I need a clean heart, Lord. Oh, God, and renew a right spirit. First of all, you got to line up with the will of God in order to find the will of God. You got to line up in order to seek him. Because if you don't line up, then you'll be operating in carnality. Carnality is in your intellect, your own mind, your thoughts. But then you got to say, Lord, what did God say about it? Glory to God. God transforms the will of man. What are you talking about, Pastor? This is you're going somewhere else. No, I'm not going somewhere else. But you gotta, you got There's a there's a heart that God's got to deal with, and there's the will He got to deal with, and then He got to deal with the mind. Glory to God. Teach me to do Your will, for You are my God. For you are my God. So you got to make it personal, Lord. You my God. When you do that, then you identify not the idle things, not the husband, not the wife, not the children, not anybody else but God. You are my God. I make it personal. I make it personal. I'm coming after you.
your spirit is good. Lead me. It says, lead me into the land of the unrighteous. That means as you follow God, if that's probably Timothy always said, layers coming off. Layers will begin to come off of you. When you go after God, those things that's not like God. See, you can't fix it. If you fix it, you're going to go right back and do it again. But when God brings it, the path is deliverance. That means you no longer want that. So now, the will of God is this right here. This is the will of God. My sister, my, my sister in Christ, we discussed this years and years ago. And remember, this is the will for our lives. You got the New Testament and the Old Testament. What does testament mean? Will. Agreement. That's what it is. So, if God has allowed us, this is our will and testament. A good father, a good parent, will leave blessings for their children. So, the promises and the blessings that this book says that has already been released into the atmosphere for all is tangible. All we got to do is put it down. It's a tangible anointing. Put it down. Pull your healing down. Pull your peace down. Pull your love down. Pull it down. Pull it down. His righteousness. His righteousness. And that goes back to the scripture. Put it down. It goes back to the prayer. That kingdom. That kingdom come. I'm pulling the kingdom down. What's he that book? I'm pulling the kingdom down. I'm pulling my healing down. I'm pulling my breakthroughs down. I'm pulling the miracles down. I'm pulling the promises down. That's why it's called a, a spoken word. That means it's, it has already been done. Why? You don't have to beg God for anything. How can you say that, Pastor? Glad you asked. Psalms 37, 37 and 25 says, I have been young, now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed, nor his seed, nor his seed, begging bread. So I don't have to beg God for anything. I just need to utilize my faith and say, Lord, your word says he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I'm already healed. You said, Lord, your word says I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm a peculiar people. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a holy nation. I'm a covenant child. Your word says that, Lord. God transformed the mind. See, all this got to be in place. It got to be in alignment in order to literally go after God. In the spirit. This is how you get the deep stuff. This is how you go deep, deep sea diving. We got to get off the surface and go deep. Because God has allowed us. I hear you, Lord. He's allowed us to even eat the crumbs. But not us, because we're the, we're the body of Christ. He said, even the crumbs that fall from the table. Even the crumbs from the fall from the table. He allowed the ones that's not in his soul, they still can eat from the table. Yeah. 
When you go deep, it's no longer. It's greater than the little thing that you see with your naked eye. Because see, God wants to shower you with peace. God wants to shower you with peace. He wants to shower you with that unconditional love, that he got with love. When you know that somebody's going to put conspiring against you. When you know that somebody got a trap set up for you, you can still love them with that God be love. That means you're going after righteousness. I'm going after the things that I can't see with the natural eye, but the things that I know I feel in my heart. How I many you know he's a heart fixer? Matter of fact, he said, take the whole heart out, the stony heart out, and put a heart of flesh. Then that heart of flesh and pump the blood of Jesus. I was in 
had a tunnel vision. And I began to fast. I began to pray. I began to meditate. I began to read the scriptures that said that it was already done. Had out of OC. I think it was three years later. I said, God, as you said, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall.
Every man and woman of the Bible, they gave an offering. Even though Jesus has paid for everything, that's why he says you can come boldly to the throne of grace. Come. But you have to have a tunnel vision to see that. You have to see this. Lord, I want more of you. And somebody said, well, you know, I got to go to work this time. But God said, I will restore. I will restore the time. I will give you the strength you need. You will find me here at the home time. And let me tell you what the devil is saying right now. Oh, I can do that in the house. But when this is a vision that has been put in place for this particular ministry, you cannot, be, you can, you cannot continue to miss your harvest. I'm going to close out with this. This is God's blessing plan. They did not get an overflow until they went deep. They did not get an overflow until they went deep. From the perspective of fruit and vegetation, let me tell you why God's breathing. Because I've already given you the stuff. But will you receive it? <coughs> when a farmer plants a seed, a farmer don't sit there all day long and all night long to see where the seed come up. But it literally happens overnight, it will supernaturally grow. Or it will produce fruit. You been there, you, you was there that day before. On the, the next day, there's a food on it. Or it has grown. But look at this. If you plant seed, if you're a seed planter, a farmer, am I right? I want y'all to listen. A farmer, when the, when the fruit and the harvest is ready. Back in the days when I grew up in Amen, South Carolina, I had a cousin named Timothy Prezi and some other ones that they had farms. But they were called, they would gather the people up a couple of days or a day, maybe on a Sunday or a Saturday, and say, Well, we need y'all to come pick the harvest. We need, they call them hands. We need y'all to come and pick on Monday. Because if they wait past Monday, then a lot of the vegetation or the fruit will rot. So the farmer literally had to go in the field and get the harvest. Because if they didn't go in the, in the field to get the harvest, you don't plant the seed. But you're about to lose your harvest. Check this in the spirit. It's the same thing in the spirit. You got to call. You got to call your harvest for. I command my harvest to come to me. I command my harvest to come to me because I got a seed in the ground. That means that harvest of healing. The harvest of peace in my household. The harvest of protection over my children. You gotta call it for you gotta be more aggressive in calling your seed. If you don't, if you, you're not aggressive, if you're not being aggressive, maybe you don't have a seed in the ground. And it's not for me to try to get you to do anything that has not already been said in this. That's when you gotta get that tunnel vision. I'm seeking you, God. What I gotta do? Show me what to do. Hallelujah. I refuse not. I refuse to let my heart stay in the field and rot up. So I'm seeking your face because I need more understanding. I'm seeking your face 
because I need more wisdom. I'm seeking your face because I need more love. I'm seeking your face because I want to get in your presence. I'm seeking your face because you're God and God all by yourself. I'm seeking your face because I got my eyes on the prize. I'm seeking your face. I'm beginning to the things are behind me. My presence of Lord to have up. I'm seeking your face. My family needs you. I'm seeking your face. You're God and God all by yourself. I'm seeking your face. I'm on my space somewhere. I'm seeking my face. I'm seeking your face. Seek in your face. Why I can find the Lord. Because the hour, I don't know the hour. I don't know the day. I'm seeking your face. 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 I'm tired of struggling. I'm seeking your face. Thank you, Lord. I got a loved one. That mind need to be delivered. I'm seeing your face. Hallelujah. I got a loved one that hasn't talked to me in a while. I'm seeing your face. I'm still grieving over a loved one that's going on. I'm seeking your face. I need your peace. I need love. I need you. I need your presence. Didn't get upset, but depression on everything was wrong. 
So they stayed back. Here it is. Farther down the road. Farther down the road. Coming down. A low incline. I noticed some truck was coming in my lane. Pick up truck. The 18 wheeler, the lane ran down with the 18 wheeler was pushing that truck into my lane. I said, Jesus. And God allowed it. I just did it. It was like in slow motion. He allowed the white truck to go up and the uh, 18 wheeler came over. But it was literally on the side of me pushing me over. All I could think about was the blood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. And me paying my tithes and my offering. Because he promised to rebuke the devour for my sin. Yes. And he did that. And he allowed us to get home safely. I prayed for the time I left to the time I always pray. Always pray. What I'm saying to you today, when you see his face. He has to. This is his word. He got to rebuke it. He got to rebuke it. He got to cut it off. He got to call it null and void. And here I am today. Somebody give God some glory. Somebody give God some glory. Somebody bless.